and boom goes the dynamite. Hey folks, my name's Nate Salzman. I'm with Jefferson Patterson Park, and welcome to the science of napping. That's napping with a K, not with a bunch of Z's, by the way. Flint napping is literally just the process of making stone tools. So right here we have an example of different materials. Not all stone is created equally. When we're doing flint napping, what we're looking for is material that has the most small and densely packed granules. I sort of think about it like playing a game of pool. And right when your cue ball strikes and hit all those balls, because they're all tightly packed and uniform, that force transfers evenly through all the balls and sends all that energy flying through. Each of those particles has enough force to, to knock into another particle, and because it's tightly packed, all that force transfers nice and evenly. Um, the exact same thing is happening with our stone. Now, if, for example, we had something that was a little less densely packed, maybe we removed some of the pool balls, um, or it has, let's say, an uneven material, maybe it's got large granules and small granules, like replacing some of those balls with ping pong balls, replacing other ones with bowling balls, you're going to have a lot less control over what's happening. Uh, those ping pong balls are going to go flying in every direction. Bowling balls are going to absorb a lot of your force. And the pool balls are going to go nice and uniformly. So right over here we have a piece of quartzite, which is nappable. It means you could turn it into a stone tool, um, but it's not ideal. When you actually look at this and shine in the light, you can actually see all those crystals in there. We consider those to be pretty darn large. Over here we have even smoother stuff. And you'll notice we can't even see any particles in this because they're so densely packed. Uh, this is a volcanic glass, also known as obsidian. When you break its edges, it's actually only one molecule's thickness. The word nap actually comes from the German word meaning to strike, because the way that we actually make our tool is we strike it. We hit it over and over again. So I have right here a piece of synthetic obsidian, also called glass, and I'm going to apply some force at a sort of steep angle, and it's going to make a little tiny flake. But now instead of pushing at an angle like this, I'm going to push a little bit more into my material. And I'll push a little bit more into my material and go, instead of going from here, I'm going to go a little bit even more pushing into my material. So you'll notice each of these flakes makes the exact same shape. It does not matter how hard I push into this material, I'm gonna create the exact same shape flake. And that is the key to flint napping. Something that's called a conchoidal fracture. So if anybody has ever experienced when they're driving in their car and a little pebble hits their windshield and there's this perfect cone that gets knocked out of their windshield, that's a conchoidal fracture. So every time you're hitting into this material, you're actually creating one of those conchoidal fractures. However, instead of hitting directly into the center of our material, we're hitting off to the edge and we're only getting part of that cone. So by adjusting my angle, all I'm really gonna do is adjust how big my flake is. That's why every time I knock into this material, I'm getting the exact same shape. Because all I'm doing is getting that conchoidal fracture and we can see how it just spreads out. Now you're gonna notice when I knock into this, I'm not gonna make that perfect cone shape, and that's because my material isn't perfectly flat. All right, so I'm gonna to try to hit this right here at this point, a little bit above it, and clear some of this stuff off so it's a little less thick. Let's see what we got. The angle at which I hold my material is basically gonna dictate how much of that cone shape actually goes into my material. I'm thickening this edge up right now because I want to apply a lot of force to it and I want to make sure that force can travel through here and not just crumble that edge. What you'll notice is I have a piece of leather in my hand and that's because these flakes will cut through quite a bit of stuff. You're making all sorts of different things with stone. You're making uh, arrowheads, spearheads, knife blades, scrapers, jewelry. Sometimes just disposable, disposable blades for cutting things up. All right. Uh, I'm Nate Salzman, and on behalf of Jefferson Patterson Park, thank you so much for watching, and stay safe, but also stay active.